will be discussing street plate technique. We will mainly cover the purpose, background, and how to identify a successful street plate. The purpose of street plate technique is to isolate pure cultures. What you will need is an auger plate, an inoculating loop, and of course a Bunsen burner, as well as bacteria to complete a street plate. It's important to know that a colony is a cluster of microbes on an auger plate. So here we can see that these are colonies because they are a cluster um, and they are microbes and it's of course on an auger plate. A pure culture is a culture that contains only one type of organism. As you can see, this is a pure culture because it only has one type of organism. These are all the same. Now a mixed culture is a culture that contains more than one type of organism. As you can see, there is more than one type of organism, so this is a mixed culture. It's always good to go to paper first to practice how to make a successful street plate. So today we're going to illustrate how you would do that. The pencil represents the inoculating loop, of course, that would have bacteria on it, which will be shown in a, later on in this video. So you're going to want to start at the top and go side to side and stay close together. And you can go about halfway here doing that, and then you'll stop. We'll number this one. Obviously, you're not going to really do that, but just to show you. And you're going to turn the auger plate to the side, and you're going to want to go about two times. You can just go a couple times over and one, and go about halfway there. Stop. We'll name this two just for demonstration and then you're gonna go a couple times into that number two and stop that'll be three and of course three does not touch one okay. so this is a representation of a bad street plate and we'll go ahead and say bad and that would be having so much spacing and then turning it here going in twice again spacing so you want to make sure to space it close, like we did here in the first example. So that's bad. And I'll show you right here. You can tell by this example that this isn't very good. It could be better. It's not terrible. But again, the spacing isn't very close together. So you want to really close the space. Another bad example would be to start going from top to bottom, which is good, but then going from bottom back to top. You never want to go from top to bottom, from bottom back to top. You just go straight down. So we're going to start the Bunsen burner here. That's a pretty good flame. And we're going to take the inoculating loop and sterilize it here. We'll let it sit for 30 seconds or so. And we're going to use this auger plate right here that has bacteria on it. And I'm just going to scrape a little bit. Don't depress too hard or get a lot on there. And I'll close that. I'm picking up our auger plate. And again, I'm going to start at the top and go side by side. Again, going from top to bottom. And I'm going to go all the way to about the halfway mark. And then you're going to turn your auger plate to the side there. Sterilize your inoculating loop it's orange. That's the indicator. That's pretty good. Let it sit there for 30 seconds or so. Pick it up and you're going to go a couple times into the first. One or two is pretty good. Go about halfway there, and again, keep your lines close together. 
Now you're going to turn your auger plate once again in the final time. And here you're not going to sterilize your inoculating loop, but you're going to go once or twice into the second, remembering to never go into the first. And then just so once you finish with that, you're going to sterilize your inoculating loop for the final time. Turn off the Bunsen burner, let that sit. So then you're going to take a Sharpie marker and on the bottom, not the top of the auger plate, you want to be sure to write your name and always do so along the edge here. So we'll have TJ, the date, and then lastly what the microorganism is. So this is what a streak plate will look like. You'll have your side there, that'd be one, two here, and three. And is this a good or bad representation of a streak plate? This is of course bad because there is a lot of spacing. Again, you want to make sure to close those gaps. This one here is a good representation of a streak plate because the gaps are closed and you can see the colonies here. Is this a good or bad representation of a streak plate? This is a good. Again, you can see the colonies here and the lines are close together. And lastly, is this a good representation of a streak plate? No, it's not. There is a lot of spacing and we wanna make sure to close those gaps.